Hi. Uh, my name is Marcin. Uh, my name is Grzesiek. And we are running uh, Division 48 uh, and this Wrocław-based illustration and uh, animation studio. Uh, among others, uh, we made cinematics for uh, Call of War as Gunslinger, uh, Might and Magic 10 Legacy, Witcher 3 and Dying Light. And uh, I will show you short demo reel now. We will start by explaining the difference between uh, 2.5D animation, camera projection and uh, 3D animation and uh, then we'll show you more about our work. Uh, so we start with 2.5D animation. Uh, now I'll show you cutscenes from uh, Call of Juarez, uh, which is made entirely with 2.5D uh, animation. So, uh, Bob Bryant got away? I knew I'd never find him in South America. <laughs> what about the other killer? Yeah, you kind of glossed over that one. Well, I found Jim not long after my showdown with Ringo. At the time, he was riding with the James Younger gang. Did I neglect to mention that? <laughs> can see uh, two and a half D animation uh, based on flat layers displayed uh, displaced in Z axis. Uh, layer are converted to 3D space and animated with 3D camera, uh, which is uh, in most cases the only object that change uh, position on the timeline. Uh, this is uh, relatively easy uh, and fast process to animate uh, and look cartoonish. Uh, but uh, this kind of animation has really a uh, small range of movement. Uh, after breaking some critical point, uh, there's obvious uh, that animation is based on flat layers. Uh, and uh, you can't use depth of field or placing particles uh, in physical space because there is no information about uh, uh, the depth of the objects, only the distance between the layers. Uh, so next step, uh, what we can do is camera projected animation. Uh, and now I'll show you our recent work. I 
I see you gather before me. Hungry, terrified, clutching your babes to your breasts. Emperor Emir has marched his legions into our lands, laid siege to every fortress from here to the Blue Mountains. Rabid and ravenous, he bites and bites away. Men of the North, you stand at the precipice. Your kings have failed you, so now you turn to the gods. And yet you do not plead. You do not kneel to dust your heads with ash. Instead, you wail, why have the gods forsaken us? We must look into the trials we failed long ago. In a time past, our world intertwined with another through an upheaval scholars call the conjunction of the spheres. The gods allowed unholy forces to slip into our domain. The offspring of that cataclysm was the nefarious force called magic. Yet we did not banish it, instead studying the vile arcane for our own power and wealth. And the monsters at our door, the unholy relics of this conjunction, the trolls, the corpse eaters, the werewolves, did we raise our swords against them? Or have we laid this burden on others? On so-called witches? Stray children taught the ways of foul sorcery. Their bodies mutated through blasphemous ritual. Sent to fight monsters, though they could not distinguish good from evil. The figure of humanity long extinguished within them. <laughs> Yet, their numbers have dwindled through the years. But a few still roam our lands, offering their bloody work for coin. To this day, they shame us with their very existence. The North bleeds! Flogged by war! The battles are the gods' whip, chastisement for our sins. And let us not forget the terrors, the scourges from beyond our world. The wild hunt rides the sky with every full moon. Abduct our children into lives unknown. Some say they handled a second conjunction. Can we charge a course back into the light? Will we find the strength to banish the mages from our kingdoms? Unite around the walls of the eternal fire. Now is the time of the sword and axe. None will fight this war in our stead. So, I will show you more about uh, camera projection later, but uh, basically uh, it is reprojecting image on the geometry. So, uh, first uh, we create uh, illustration and uh, then visible part of the geometry uh, to give depth information to the flat illustration. Uh, uh, it is half step between uh, full uh, 3D graphic uh, and uh, two and a half the animation. So we get a uh, uh, pretty wide range of movement, uh, depth information to apply depth of field, particle effects, uh, sometimes even smoke uh, or fire simulations. Uh, in some cases uh, you can relight it slightly Mm, but it is still based on illustrations, so you recreate only visible part uh, of the mesh in opposition to the full 3D, uh, full CG, full 3D uh, graphic where you must make a full model. Uh, but still it's a very complicated process with similar steps to 3D uh, modeling, texturing, etc. Uh, and still uh, range of movement is uh, limited uh, to more or less point of view made on illustration. Uh, and last thing is uh, 3D animation. The eyes of the world have been 
glued to the city of Quran for the past two months, following the outbreak of a previously unknown pathogen. It is not yet clear what has caused this gruesome affliction. The local government's Ministry of Defense erected a quarantine wall shortly after the outbreak. The global relief effort's steady stream of supply drops has sustained what few survivors remain in the city. The Ministry of Defense believes more radical action should be taken to stem the tide of this virus. The question is, are there still non-infected survivors in the city as the GRE maintains? And if so, will the Ministry still go through with a stated plan to annihilate the city? in an attempt to wipe out the Quran virus once and for all. Whether by way of the virus, or the ministry's proposed plan, one thing is certain. The last days are numbered. That was intro from Dying Light. Uh, 3D, as we all know, uh, gives us a wide range of movement and a lot of tools to animate and simulate and do whatever we want, basically. Uh, we can use camera-based depth of field and particle simulations, uh, but uh, this is time-consuming and it's hard to achieve nice-looking uh, illustration-like style. Uh, and now, uh, so uh, I will try to tell something about the illustration, uh, but uh, at first uh, I would like to say something about the scenario, because this is the the, the base uh, of every animation, uh, and some somewhat about the um, collaboration with the um, developers and. Um, so um, most of the time, uh, we uh, the scenario is delivered by the developer or by some kind of outsource agency, uh, and a perfect situation for us is uh, to have possibility to uh, co-create the scenario or to make some important changes uh, to it, uh, and it comes from two reasons. Uh, first is um, uh, uh, we know both the advantages and uh, the limits of the technology that we use. So we know uh, which idea included in the scenario uh, we can creatively expand and uh, what we should reduce or even completely cut out. Cut out. Uh, the second reason is that the developers, uh, the, the, the writers uh, hired by the developer studio can be excellent uh, professionals uh, which uh, that um, creating uh, that creates uh, the great plots producing quests and uh, writing uh, splendid uh, uh, dialogues but uh, not necessarily uh, they know how to create content for this kind of this specific kind of animation very very um, short very intense uh, and um, so, uh, uh, referring to this, uh, the ideal situation for us is a very close uh, cooperation between between us or the creators of the animation and the writers and the producers from the very first stage of uh, building the scenario for for, for animation. Uh, during our work, we have experienced two kinds of approach. To, to the screenplay. Uh, for example, working on uh, Dying Light, we got um, precisely written monologues uh, of narr narrators and l very loosely sketch, uh, sketch description of uh, things which could happen on the screen. So uh, we've got a uh, free hand, basically, uh, in terms of, uh, of the form of the animation. Uh, so as a result, we have got a uh, realization much more developed in form, uh, but without any changes in content. Um, uh, and w working on Witcher, we've got an uh, opposite situation. Uh, the scenarios were uh, much more strict. Uh, we knew exactly scene after scene what should uh, appear on the, on the screen. 
However, we we still uh, we still had some influence on the process of the of the scenes. For example, we completely cut off uh, one or two scenes because we uh, we thought that uh, it worked very poorly in this animation. Uh, and both both ways uh, of uh, approach to the to the scenario uh, have advantages and weaknesses. Uh, giving more free hand uh, can bring much more interesting uh, final effect, but requires much more trust uh, to the to the creators. Uh, and this is this is all about about the scenario. And now something about uh, illustrations. Ah, okay, okay. So, um, uh, I will say something short about the uh, composition uh, of the illustration, uh, because the process of composing illustration for uh, this kind of animation is uh, slightly different than uh, composing for uh, the classic picture, because in uh, classic picture we have um, uh, one permanent composition and we don't care <laughs> uh, about anything else. Uh, but here we have a very different situation because camera moves around constantly. So we don't have one composition, we have uh, numbers of compositions. Uh, so uh, layers overlap each other and cover themselves, uh, even the objects we see uh, in a slightly different angles, uh, so so everything everything uh, changed. Um, uh, so uh, all of that pushes the illustrator to uh, predict movement of the camera and to create some potential for this movement. Uh, so for sure, is some starting point. Uh, if uh, it is a composition which lasts the longest time on screen. Uh, sometimes it is the beginning of the scene and then everything accelerates. Uh, sometimes it occupies the middle of the scene uh, or even the end. Uh, so, uh, but um, o um, overall the, the there can be a situation where cameras smoothly uh, flows through the scene uh, uh, to the next one. So this uh, requir requires not only establishing composition for that particular scene, but also for uh, scenes next and before uh, in some context. So uh, in that case, uh, making storyboards and animatic helps a lot uh, in workflow. So, um, Polish is someone take? Ah. Okay. So, uh, this is a small animation that presents uh, uh, planes uh, in in the scene. And this is a very important thing in in animation and in uh, in in this kind of uh, animation because um, uh, the, the number of the scenes can uh, create a three dim dimensionality of the scene. So uh, having more of them brings much more naturalness to the composition in movement. Uh, so, for example, clouds flow slightly across the, the sky, people slowly overlap and cover the background and themselves. Uh, every even really, really small movement is a pleasure for eye of the viewer. Uh, uh, so, person or things uh, set on the foreground have a great impact 
on the viewer, like like a, oh, yeah. We don't have it uh, in in this scene, but for example, uh, in 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 the uh, here, for example, the 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 hand on the first plane, or here the on the left the the man in the rope. Uh, okay. And some some scratches and and pieces of the wood. Uh, so uh, so this is the, the, the this is some trick. Or oh, here, here is the 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 column uh, of the the architecture piece on the first play of the first plane, uh, and it's uh, it brings uh, uh, it. It moves uh, right in the front of, no of the nose of the spectator, and it's very, uh, very nice to see in the animation, and it creates the three-dimensionality uh, in the animation. So, but unfortunately, uh, it connects with the problem that uh, these kind of objects are very exposed to the distortions. Uh, so, very often, they are just uh, very dark or even uh, black shapes. Uh, okay. Uh, sometimes uh, to get references uh, for illustrations, the easiest solution uh, is to make photo session. Uh, amongst other things, it gives us uh, sometimes happy accidents uh, nice natural movement and uh, poses uh, that can't be accomplished with 3D soft as a reference. I can show you short video. This is photo session for Witcher. I think now we have thousands of photos. Uh, so, we are back to camera projection. Uh, what you can see uh, is a uh, basic principle of camera projection. Uh, image is projected on the mesh uh, through the virtual uh, camera lens, so if you use uh, 35 millimeter uh, projector and 35 millimeter camera place it in the same spot in space uh, as projector is, you will get undistorted uh, image on the mesh. Uh, but the more surface is rotated um, parallelly to the camera, uh, like sides of the sphere, uh, then distortion is bigger. That is because there is less information carried in the illustration uh, for this region. On the other hand, surface perpendicular to camera gets uh, full representation. Uh, this is the reason why uh, camera projection uh, have limited movement. Uh, now a little bit, bit geeky. Uh, we are a relatively small company and uh, if you are small, you must go smart. So, we based our pipeline uh, around uh, one basic principle. We are pushing decisions uh, as far in the process as we can. 
uh, which means, uh, for example, uh, transferring depth of field, motion blur, etc., to the post process instead of uh, render. Uh, in terms of uh, camera projection, uh, we are modeling everything in uh, Modo and then exporting OBJ uh, files and baked textures uh, to After Effects and uh, Element 3D uh, from Video Copilot. Uh, this way, 3D render is done by After Effects, not 3D software. Uh, and uh, it's really convenient uh, workflow, especially you need to change camera movement because everything uh, updates automatically and you render only once. Uh, as we show you uh, earlier, we are using a lot of layers to get depth in scene, but uh, when we are talking about 3D uh, mapping, we need even more. Uh, in static illustration, uh, or even in 2.5D animation, if you, uh, for example, uh, hand occludes uh, body, you don't need to worry about this, what is beneath the hand, uh, but here you can change point of view. So uh, we cut uh, layers uh, to separate pieces and later on uh, pro project them uh, on separate meshes. Uh, okay, uh, this is uh, example shows much more movement that was intended for this scene. Uh, but still, it holds up pretty well. Uh, as you can see, mesh itself is, isn't pretty, uh, but this is enough to make it work. Uh, most important are faces, and this is elements uh, on which we spend most time. And this kind of mesh uh, give you enough information to uh, get depth of field, to occlude particles, to or make basic collisions or even simulations. Uh, and here you have uh, mesh and texture for it. Uh, okay. Sometimes uh, camera projection isn't enough. Uh, so the best way is combine it with full uh, 3D stuff. Uh, we are using simulated banners to give uh, a little life to some scenes, uh, as you can see previously. Uh, this one is a uh, simulated great tool, uh, Marvelous Designer. Uh, we render it inside Modo and then uh, placed it uh, and seen as a flat layer. Uh, this one uh, shows combining layers of uh, conjunction of the spheres from which are free recap. Uh, this basically can be separate presentation about achieving uh, cartoonish or illustration like uh, look in 3D animation. Uh, but basically we used several uh, separate painted layers uh, for diffuse as well as reflection specular. Uh, this combined it with uh, additional layers on top uh, in compositing let us uh, achieve hand-drawn and dirty style of uh, 3D graphics. Uh, Another big in scale example uh, is City of Kartal from Might and Magic 10 Legacy. Uh, we wanted to make long dolly shot, uh, which is uh, hard uh, in mapped animation uh, and almost impossible and in two and a half D animation. Uh, only way to achieve this was to go fully uh, 3D. Uh, we made a lot of assets to populate scene amongst the main geometry. Uh, 
whole scene uh, was a mix of uh, full f uh, 3D graphic on the first plans and camera projected uh, illustration uh, further, uh, where distortion is not so visible. Uh, this is clay render. Uh, whole scene was uh, lit uh, similarly to painted uh, backgrounds and uh, a lot of uh, smoke and dust helps to sell distance and depth of the scene. Uh, this approach requires much more work than illustration based uh, scene but as you can see there is uh, uh, there is a possibility to change uh, camera angle in much uh, wider range. This is a part of that mesh. Uh, uh, in uh, which are each illustration uh, were uh, color, so th there was only uh, uh, art directing uh, for... Uh, art directing on the, on the space of just uh, doing the illustrations, not, not in the, the uh, part of color grading. Uh, so there was no color grading in this. But uh, for example, in Might and Magic, uh, we've done, done all animation in black and white and uh, color it uh, in post-process. Uh, here we wanted to show you just a uh, wide range of colors uh, in uh, this illustration. This is not just sepia or blue or... I don't know what one one color. This is a wide range of colors, uh, and I think it is basically it. Questions. Maybe some questions. Hi, uh, there was a scene uh, with this uh, proje projection animation uh, with a wolf and it was in front of us and the second scene was it was from uh, the other side. Did you try to make the one model uh, with perfect mapping uh, projection or did you create the assets for these two scenes separately? We created uh, separate meshes uh, and hide our crimes uh, in black shapes uh, in the first plan. Uh, when you have the, you showed the, the simple mesh underneath the drawing, do you have like a, an easy way to uh, make the drawing into the 3D mesh or do you do it by hand? Uh, we do it uh, basically by hand. This is uh, recreating, uh, we have uh, image in the background and then we rec recreating p parts of the models. As you can see, this is a really sim simple geometry and we don't really care if this hand is full anatomically okay, but yeah, we recreate it. No more questions? So I think, thank you. Ah. Oh, here's a question. Here's a question and she's just shy. Uh, okay, uh, I, I wanted to ask if you feel you're uh, new in Poland with this or are you new in uh, in the whole world? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's something, uh, I think it's your speciality, uh, this kind of movies. So I was wondering h how you feel about it uh, in the business, in in our country and uh, in the meaning of the you know the world. Uh, I think we are not 
the first one that uh, made de definitely not the first one that made this kind of uh, animation. Uh, uh, Blizzard done it, I think. Uh, hmm? Juice uh, with uh, uh, look mm, video clip, uh, but for in fact we sp specialize uh, in this kind of uh, animation. But uh, because this is limited uh, technologies, uh, we looking for. Uh, more 3D uh, animation because in this field uh, uh, there there's a, a lot things to things to do but uh, it is limited. I think just uh, in every animation we we've done we uh, we were trying to push it a little a little bit further. Uh, so every every animation first we 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 done the uh, call for the gunslinger and it was just the flat uh, planes uh, and uh, 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 and after that we done the might and magic and we thought that okay let's do it in uh, two, two uh, uh, the map with the mapping technology and in the witcher we got okay the, the mapping technology let mix it with the 3d completely in the cartoonish way and let's uh, make some uh, um, uh, particles and let's do it in full color and so I don't know what we're gonna do next because <laughs> we, we run off out of the ideas <laughs> but uh, now we are trying, trying every time we are trying to do some to do something new because uh, uh, stuck in the same place is the, the worst thing I think I have question about storyboarding of uh, illustration uh, that uh, when you move uh, objects, I'm interested how do you uh, find those final ca um, cropping? How do we uh, how do we find the final cropping? Crop. Uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think um, I, I've uh, I've said something about it before that uh, <laughs> you you didn't listen. <laughs> uh, I think um, you know. Mm, I don't really know. I think this is something about intuition a little bit and uh, uh, something about uh, luck because. Uh, uh, I think some illustrators, because we now we um, cooperating with with other illustrators, and they they do some illustration for us. Uh, for example, now we we are working on the uh, Heroes of the Mind and Magic Seven, and we we uh, cooperating with two or three illustrators, and just uh, they 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 have it. They they know that. That if they compose this uh, illustration this way, it it will works with the camera movement, and uh, they can predict it. And uh, uh, but for example, uh, when I I do the illustration illustration for it, I do um, I have a, a illustration and I have a, a smaller uh, smaller uh, frame. Uh, and I um, I slide this frame through the through the illustration, and I s I I trying to to see how it will works in the this small piece and in the small piece here and the small piece here, and and I I I'm trying how how it how it moves and how it feels and 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 I I count on my luck for the most time. <laughs> And on the end, uh, this is cooperation because uh, if you have a flat illustration, you can't 
tell uh, in hundred uh, percent how it will look like uh, in three D or mm, as a mapped illustration. So uh, there's a part of uh, work after uh, mapping to to get uh, as close results uh, to illustration uh, as it possible because hardly ever there's uh, one to one uh, possibility to, to, to make one to one uh, uh, mapped, mapped illustration like basic flat illustration. Okay, so thank you very much.